What's going on everyone? Gilman with the Volti Stocks back with our daily Apple update video ticker symbol AAPL where we take a look at how Apple stock traded today, key levels of support and resistance that we're looking at moving into the future and what we think of earnings that are going to happen in two days. So um, we are going to take a look at all that real quick though. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button down below guys. It really helps me out. Like the video and comment down below what your thoughts on Apple are and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. Let me go ahead and and hit record um, and we'll get right into it as always if you guys like what i'm using here i'm using webull link in the description below if you want to sign up we both get some free shares but apple had itself a nice little green day up only 40 cents on the day which is 0.3 percent um, so not too great of a day but also not too shabby there so what i want to take a look at here is this article um, that talks about um, s p going up a little bit as we are getting closer to tech earnings right so um tesla was doing relatively well today um and let's see uh we, we are expecting to get that quarterly report soon um and then also talks about kind of some other uh tech earnings that we're expecting this week so this is a pretty big week guys um in terms of earnings so uh, we could see some swings up and down um depending on how stocks perform the other thing i want to take a look at is apple um, investing $430 billion spending spree um, as an ultimate power play. Uh, so they're going to do next generation chips, artificial intelligence, and 5G technologies. So that's great. Um, previously, they had proposed five-year goal of $350 billion, um, and they actually raised it by 20% to $430 billion, which is absolutely great, right? Um, and this is what I like to see here. It points to Apple's confidence in the economy and its willingness to invest aggressively to keep up with the pace of innovation. So we're talking you know, semiconductors, artificial intelligence, and wireless technologies. Um, I think these are all areas that are expected to grow in the future. Um, and so by Apple kind of investing, it, it kind of shows that, you know, A, that they're confident that the, the economy is going to continue doing well, but B, that they're willing to do what it takes to kind of keep ahead of the curve. Then they also, um, I mean, they're planning on raising the corporate tax rate from 21 to 28 percent, which could you know, hurt the, a lot of companies bottom line. So Apple doing this is kind of, um, you know, a way for Apple to kind of come out and say, hey, we're willing to put this money in the economy. Um, and, you know, if they spend more, their kind of income is lower as well. Uh, so they have to pay lower taxes there. So both great news, guys. Um, the other thing that you guys obviously know is that we have earnings coming up in just two days. Um, so let's take a look at how Apple did today. We'll take a look at future levels of support, future levels of resistance. So what we talked about is that 135 level and the reason we talked about that is because previously the last week especially it's held up as a really really solid level of resistance we tried at it maybe four or five times could not break above it so today at the beginning of the day looked like we were going to try it again it didn't sold off all the way to 133.57 which is only 12 cents above our level you guys pushed up and then it was pretty stable again making a late run um, 135.06 again pretty much getting rejected at the 135 level saw a little sell-off with the S&P pushed up and now flat um, so about 40 cent gain on the day that's compared to Nasdaq's 0.87 percent um, S&P's 0.2 percent gain and Dow Jones was negative on the day 0.17 so a little underperforming the Nasdaq overperforming um, Dow Jones and S&P. So let's take a look at Apple and the daily chart. What do we see? So first things first, you guys, um, what I want to talk about here is, um, you know, there's bull pennant that we were talking about. We broke out of that one from kind of the low 120s uh, to kind of the mid 130s, right? But now if you take a look here, um, one, two, three, four, five, and then sixth time today, we struggled at that 135 level. In yesterday's video, I said if we can clear 135, I think we see 138 to 140 sometime early this week um, before earnings, and my hypothesis kind of remains the same. I think the 135 level clearly, as we see here, is the tough level to break, um, but I think if we break that, it kind of sets us up really nicely for um, a run towards the 138 level. 138, I think, is also going to be kind of a similar situation where we struggle to break above it. 
So from a level of support, we got this 133.45 that we validated today. We got 132.52, and then we also got 131.45. The key good thing about a couple of these levels, let me just point it out, April 21st, April 22nd, which was last Wednesday and Thursday, we validated 131.45, real nice. This 133.45, which is our first level of support, we validated today, we validated once last week, um, yeah, once last week and twice the week before. So. 133.45, 131.45, both relatively validated levels gives me good support. Resistance though is kind of a different story, you guys. We are having strong, strong resistance at 135, um, so not good there. I was hoping that we'd start to you know, push up. The thing that I like about today is we, we recovered really nicely today, so this candle looks nice. Um, it means we have room to kind of keep going up, hopefully, fingers crossed. 135 and then if we can get past that then um, you know 136 will be a resistance as well but really 138 to 140 is kind of my goal um, but that needs to happen in the next two days right um, obviously we have earnings coming up that could go either way I personally think with the amount it's ran um, if we get kind of normal earnings nothing crazy we see a little bit of a sell-off but if we get some sort of guidance that we're not expecting um, then I think it has the potential to shoot up towards all-time highs so I think the key here is not necessarily earnings it's more the guidance right so Netflix came out um, had okay earnings um, but they said that their guidance um, was not as good as it is as people were expecting guidance is what the company expects to do in the near future um, and that's what investors ultimately are paying for right they're not paying for what the company's worth today they're paying for what the company is going to be worth a year from now two years from now five years from now even a few months from now technically so we're seeing a nice kind of rounding out if this can continue if not i think we face resistance at 135 so the 135 again is a key level to watch so kind of keep that in mind the other thing i want to talk about is that s p is a little bit on the overbought side but i think with tech earnings we could uh you know keep pushing up a little bit before we pull back um but yeah that's something that i want to talk about in terms of kind of options through earnings in yesterday's video talk about what's called the iv crush so implied volatility on a lot of the options is going to go down after earnings because as you go into earnings there's a lot of uncertainty on what apple stock is going to do i don't know what apple stock is going to do you don't know what apple stock is going to do so that uncertainty is built into the stock price after that the uncertainty goes away so if you think apple's going to do really well um, and they're going to kill earnings and you think that's going to make the stock price go up they can kill earnings like they did last time and that can make the stock price go down so if you think Apple stock price is going to keep rising, maybe you want to hold on to your calls. If Apple stays flat through earnings, your call pri your call uh, prices are going to go down just because of the IV crush. Another thing I want to take a look at here, you guys, is earnings. We take a look here. Um, that's the last time we were at the 140s. And even though Apple absolutely killed earnings in all regards possible, um, we saw a pullback from the mid 140s all the way down to the low or pretty much the 130 level. Um, and then if we go a little bit back again, um, this time it was selling off before earnings and then it saw a little bit of a turnaround. If we go to the time below, we saw a little bit of a sell off. Here though, we saw a nice gap up. So really, no one can tell you what earnings are going to do. Um, this is you know July of last year. If we go back exactly um, you know a year ago, kind of two one, pretty flat, right? So we got flat, we got a nice gap up, and then we got let's see, we got a little bit push up after flat, but push up. And then we got the last two times um, it, it pushed down, or last time it pushed down. So anything can really happen. Um, don't try to predict what earnings you're gonna do. I personally continue to hold my Apple shares. Um, I moved my covered call up to 130 last week um, for I think I got like a maybe 25, 30 cent credit, um, which is 25 or 30 dollars. Um, the reason I'm keep rolling, I keep rolling it is because I want to hold on to my Apple share. So unless they get called away, I'll keep rolling it. And if Apple starts to do well, you know, I'll be able to roll it for a credit. So not too worried there. Um, but yeah, it'll be really exciting to see how Apple does with earnings. It'll be really excited to see how some other companies uh, do with earnings because I think that could really take the market one way or another. As always, I'll try to keep you guys posted on that. If you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to hit that like button down below. Subscribe to my channel if you are new and comment down below what your thoughts on Apple are and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. Let's remember to be a bit better every single day and until next time.